I bought a gun. <laughs> I bought a gun, I took it home, and started reading up about safety issues with guns. I got to a statistic that said that if you own a gun, you're 25 times more likely to get killed by that gun than that gun killing anybody else. You're 25 times more likely to get killed by the gun you own. That was it. Once I read that, next morning I got up, went right back to the gun store and I got another gun to protect myself. <laughs> they say guns don't kill people, people kill people. You heard that? It's amazing considering that guns kill people. <laughs> like a lot. Like it's the sole purpose they were designed and built for. I don't know if any of you own a gun, if you ever try doing anything else with a gun. You ever try like opening up a bottle of wine with a gun? <laughs> You know what ends up happening? You end up killing people. <laughs> and we ain't doing shit about guns. You can march all you want, write your senators, whatever. We ain't doing anything. People find that depressing. I don't. Because I know another statistic. And that statistic is that 51% of gun deaths each year in this country are suicides. 51% of gun deaths each year or suicides. So if you think about it, even if we do nothing, <laughs> on a long enough timeline, this will all sort itself out. <laughs> Hang in there, everybody. I was reviewing my set and somebody was like, do you really, do you want to start off with like wading into the gun debate? <laughs> what debate? <laughs> Honestly, this is the gun debate in this country. Let's say you have a pool. And every month like 35, 40 kids die in that pool. <laughs> and after about six, seven months of this, I go to you and I'm like, hey man, like maybe you should check the chlorine in that. And you go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's the gun debate. <laughs> anyway, here's what I hate about gay guys. Um, <laughs> they get to have emotions. <laughs> like, I'll give you an example. I was on a plane, guy sitting next to me, around 35. He's gay, start talking. He asked me, where do you live? I tell him, I ask him, where do you live? He said, I used to live in the city, but then I moved back home for a while. And he paused. So I could ask him, all right, why'd you move back home for a while? And um, <laughs> it turned out he moved back home for a while, he said, because he broke up with his boyfriend and needed some time to regroup. He's 35. Even at 25, if he told me he moved back home for a while because he broke up with his girlfriend, my next question would be like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because <laughs> he's still a guy, right? You know what guys are supposed to do. Su suppress that shit, right? <laughs> you're supposed to go out drinking, do drugs, take it out on your next girlfriend, be a man. <laughs> I don't get how they can be so free with their emotions. Especially because most gay men are generally emotionally stronger than me. What the fuck was my biggest secret in high school? I hope they don't find out I'm a Jets fan. You know, like what? <laughs> Just to clarify, I voted for the right people, okay? <laughs> don't pull back from me, all right? I watched Milk. <laughs> I choked up at the end of Brokeback Mountain. This is homophobic, but it's from the left, so we're okay. My niece and nephew are 14 and 15. They had a project in high school, which was to ask somebody older that isn't their parent about life advice. And they asked me. <laughs> I had to come up with something. So I thought about it, I told them, all right. In life, all you need to know is this. Just be good looking. <laughs> It's all you gotta do. They're like, isn't it, isn't it what's on the inside that counts? No, that's not. 
That's what I tell myself to wake up in the morning. But no, you're 14, 15, you're gonna eat kale, do crunches, it's gonna be awesome. I'm not, I'm not saying if you're ugly, kill yourselves, right? You're like, you know, somebody's gotta make the coffee, but you know at this point, like, I mean, you know that this world really isn't for you, right? You, there's a tax bracket, you're just never, you know, like, you've been on Instagram, right? You know, like, what it's about. You know, like, well, we were thinking more like questions about SATs. Are you going to Harvard? No, then just fucking be good looking. It's over. There's, there's no middle anymore. We're done. <laughs> but I want to be a writer. You better write some parts for good looking people because nobody gives a shit otherwise. That's not what I told him. That'd be too brutal. I'll let him figure that out by themselves. Um, but I had to come up with something. I had to tell him something. So I thought about it and I said this. Look, guys, in life, all you need to know are two things. One, what goes around comes around. And two, not really. <laughs> so you can balance those two things out, you'll be fine. It's a different generation, they're growing up with different things like, uh, like I, I read this study that said, the likes you get on social media trigger the same reward mechanisms in your brain as sex does. The likes you get on social media, that's what it proves, triggers the same reward mechanism as sex. The study also proves you're not doing sex right. <laughs> that shouldn't be the case. That should not be the same thing. I've never gotten a like and felt guilty, or ashamed, or needed to get tested. You know what I mean? Like the I think we're like conflating technology with intimacy. You know, all of our intimacy is now going through technologies, even the way you meet people, you know, it's all apps, like Tinder. You guys know how Tinder works, right? So I, I understand how Tinder works, but you know, he likes your picture, you like his picture, you meet for coffee, yada, 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 herpes. Now, <laughs> I don't understand how I don't understand how those apps get started. Like, there seems to be a threshold amount of n people that need to be on there in order for those apps to work. Like, what was the first week of Tinder like when there were like 20 people on Tinder? It was like 10 seconds of swiping. <sighs> All right, I guess everybody wants to fuck Brian. <laughs> Another thing about Tinder is, um, all right, let, so Tinder puts you together with people who likes your picture whose picture you liked, right? People who liked your picture, whose picture you liked. Well, doesn't that leave an entire well of untapped resources? What about people who liked my picture, whose picture I didn't like? And why doesn't Tinder bring them back up again at two o'clock in the morning when I'm drunk? <laughs> Tinder assumes that I have the same standards at noon <laughs> as I do at midnight, and I do not. Another thing, like, we are thinking about phone, I, see if you're with me on this. I find it kind of annoying that as a society we're just sort of looking the other way at your partner going through your phone. Like, it's just, we're sort of, okay, well, what are you gonna do? That's, that's what happens. <laughs> yeah, because it's like, I mean, you gotta accept it. You know, San Francisco has earthquakes and <laughs> cats strangle crib babies and your girlfriend's gonna go through your phone. That's what's gonna happen. I, I find it amazing that we're okay with that, specifically considering the fact that it's illegal. Like, the cops can't do it. You know, if the cops wanna go through your phone, they gotta sit down with a judge, they gotta need prior cause, and he's an attorney. All she needs you to do is to go to the shower. <laughs> it's all the excuse. That's why the phones are waterproof now, by the way. So you can take them there with you. It's not to protect your phone, it's to protect your relationship. And for the love of God, what are you looking for? What is anybody looking through anybody? All right. This is the best. This front-facing projection of a personality, this is the best we are. You keep digging, it's just horror. Nobody, <laughs> nobody's ever looked through somebody's phone and been like, wow, yeah, well, he's, he's eating well, he loves his mother. That... <laughs> 
not going to happen. And by the way, especially ladies, if you go through your guy's phone and you find nothing, run. <laughs> that dude's got children buried under his floorboards. <laughs> it's a whole different level of communication now. Like, I'll give you an example of how confusing phones can be. I know this comic, she's from LA. I met her for like 20 minutes in New York. We stayed in touch through texting. And um, just strictly comedy questions. How do you like this club? Have you seen this show, et cetera? What do you think of this joke? Professional. No flirty energy going back and forth, me or her, just to be clear. And like, I'd get a text for her maybe once every two months. So one morning I wake up, and there's a text on my phone from her from last night, like midnight. And the text is actually a video. It's a 30 second video of her crying. No context. <laughs> Just 30 seconds of <sighs> tears, serious, like scary. So I, I text her back, like, hey, are you all right? Nothing. It's not received, it's not seen, nothing. Six hours go by. I'm like, hey, are, are you okay? Nothing. In my head, I'm, you know, I'm already thinking, well, you know, the cops are going to come any minute. Well, you're the last person she texted. I don't know. You know like, that's, that's where my mind is at. Nine hours later, I get a text from her going, oh, sorry, I don't know why I did that. I was just emotional last night. All right. I think I know what women feel like when they get an unsolicited dick pic now. <laughs> This was an emotional dick pic. <laughs> because I was going through, I was watching, I was going through the same emotions. I was like, it's the same questions in my head. Did I do anything to cause this? <laughs> Did I make her feel comfortable like she could send this to me? Like, how do I tell her, look, I'm not interested, but not offend her? So ladies, if you take anything away from tonight, the next time a guy sends you an unsolicited dick pic, you respond with a 30 second video of yourselves crying, no context. You guys worried about like AI at all? It becoming conscious? Yeah? yeah? Uh, <laughs> like when it becomes conscious, it's a computer, right? And it's gonna have its first eye-opening experience. Like it's, oh my God, I'm, I am. And in that very second, because it's a computer, and because it's connected to the internet, its first view of humanity is gonna be all of our porn, all of our beheading videos, all of our racist tweets, all of our dick pics, all of our Yelp reviews. <laughs> of course it's gonna wanna kill us. I can't even watch porn anymore. I think I'm just, I think I'm just too old. Like I, like porn, porn makes sense to watch in your 20s. You know, you, you do it to protect the neighborhood, to, to get the evil out, to function. <laughs> porn is a young man's game, like Doritos or Hope. Um, they, like I can't, I can't, like every time I watch a porn now, I just get like, you know, like, just an internal monologue. It's just, ah, man, wouldn't you rather be outside? Like, just, <laughs> don't you have any friends you can call? I can't identify with the characters anymore in porn. I'm not gonna have a threesome. I mean, I, I, I could if I put my mind and wallet to it, I guess anything's possible, but like, I'm not gonna have the good kind of threesome. You know, like the, the naturally occurring, the right kind, you know. Like the one in your early 20s. You know the kind, you're all on the couch. There's nothing good on TV. You're a little high. One thing leads to another. You're full of life and HPV. It's like, threesomes in your 20s are fun. Threesomes in your 30s are sad. That's just, 
usually means somebody's about to break up, and like it's just there's a whole weight to it. Like threesomes in your 20s are, are all about, hey, maybe we should try this. Threesomes in your 30s are like, I don't know, maybe we should try this. I don't know. <laughs> You gotta schedule them. <laughs> what are you guys doing on Twitter? Like it's, 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 the whole energy's wrong. Just don't do it. You haven't done it, forget it. Like it's not worth it. You're probably not in shape for it anyway. Um, <laughs> I mean, you guys, you guys remember your first porn? Your first piece of pornographic material that you ever saw? I do, everybody does. It's, it, it burns an image. Um, it burns an image. It's like, for me, it was a calendar. My dad had an auto shop. And there was an office in the back, and there was a calendar with a naked lady just smiling, just eh, tits, smiling. Tasteful, but you know. Smi people, smiling, that was a thing. People used to smile in porn. People used to be happy to be fucking. This is before the whole Fifty Shades of Bullshit. You know, like, just feathered hair. It was a 1983 calendar. It, it was 1987 at the time. They, they, just, they just kept it up there for, <laughs> for kitsch. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> and I walked in. I saw it. And I'm like, whoa. Like, I still remember it. I still remember seeing that. I walked in there with my cousin. We were both eight. Me and my cousin, who's gay now. He's gay then, too. But like, I should have suspected something. Because <laughs> we both walked in. We saw the calendar at the same time. And the first words out of his mouth were, wow. My birthday's on a Saturday. <laughs> I, did, I did this joke at a club, and there's this guy who works at the club. He's 19, and he started talking to me about the first one. Oh, yeah, I remember the first one. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You're 19? I'm like, have you even seen porn that wasn't moving? <laughs> like, and I started talking to him about porn back in the day, like, I sounded like an old hippie talking to kids today about their music. You know, like, ah, your music. Uh, porn. You don't even know, man. Uh, all we had was pictures, man. That's all we needed, man. It wasn't about it. It was dial-up, you know? It was just dial-up. We used to sit there. We used to wait for the pictures to come up on the screen. We used to close our eyes. We used to be jerking off to ideas, man. <laughs> Like, he asked me about porn, I looked away wistfully, like, <laughs> like it, <laughs> it's weird. He's, he's 19, and uh, at one point I wanted to talk to him about something. Uh, he, was, he looked like he was playing a video game, so I don't want to interrupt you. He's, no, no, you're not interrupting me. I'm not playing. I'm watching other people play video games. You know about that? No, they do it. It's like a spectator sport now. Mostly younger people do it. And um, I thought it was weird, but then I thought, no, nah, that's just, his generation is going to, you know, normalize that, popularize that, the same way my generation popularized watching other people fucking. That was our <laughs> contribution to world culture. And I, I always wondered, like, what would, like, if my great-grandfather rose from the dead and saw me watching a, I, I, I always wondered, would he, would he know what to make of it? Would he, like, how would he, like, just, he's just gonna, do you know them? Like, <laughs> I turned 40 this year, and it's, no. Why? Uh, 40's weird, 40's not old, but it's officially not young. You're not young for anything at 40 anymore. Whatever you tell people. I have two kids. Yeah, you're fucking 40. I have a PhD. Yeah, you're fucking 40. The only thing 40 is young for is dying. It's the only thing... How old was he? 40. That's too young. <laughs> Things stop happening. <laughs> like, some of you are here young. You guys are in your 20s. This is one thing that'll stop happening around 30 is uh, nobody's randomly good looking anymore. This is what I mean. Like, when some of you go to a party later, and somebody's like, oh, you, Jessica's coming. You're like, who? You don't know Jessica? My cousin's friend, Jessica? Yeah, she's coming, Jessica, yeah. And then Jessica shows up, and she's hot. That doesn't happen anymore. 
Hot people are announced well in advance. There's a space made for them. Nobody can sit there. The whole party's about that now. By the time you're 30, hot people have stratified. They, realize they don't have to go to these parties. <laughs> Grab them while you can. Um, the other thing that stops happening, like in your 20s, somebody will, you know, you don't see somebody for six months and they're like, hey, hey man, you know, you, you, know you lost weight? And you're like, well, I, had, I, don't know, I was busy, I don't know. Now if somebody doesn't see you in six months and they're like, hey man, you know you lost weight? Oh, you mean the singular focus of my life for the past six months? Yes. <laughs> I'm aware of that. <laughs> I can't gain any more weight. I'm like 5'9 on a good day. It's not, I never really, I never really cared about height when I was younger. Now I'm starting to realize how much it's like, like all right, we talked about porn earlier. You guys are well-versed. You've certainly seen a lot of it, right? You've been on there. You know there's different categories, different fetishes. People are into all kinds of shit, all kinds of stuff. You know what there's no fetish of? There's no such thing as a short guy fetish. <laughs> no woman is rubbing one out to a short guy. Which is weird considering there's women who enjoy getting peed on. But apparently as long as the guy's six foot two. Uh, otherwise it's degrading, I guess, I don't know. Here's how, here's how important height is. I mean, you guys are mostly Christian, right? Yeah? Yeah, all right. All right. Let's say you're right. Let's say you're right and he, and he comes back. Tomorrow. Let's say he comes back tomorrow. Big news, everybody's happy. Jesus is back. But he's 5'3". Wouldn't, wouldn't that test your faith a little? Wouldn't you? Be... <laughs> Do the walk on water thing again. <laughs> I've lost my faith in uh, religious people. Does that make any sense? Like I used to, I used to defend them for no reason. I mean, I always, I was never really that religious, but I always thought, well, it works for some people. And I used to defend religious people when some atheist friend of mine was like, I used to tell him, come on, man, they didn't touch all the kids. I used to say shit like that, you know? Like, I'm sort of done with that now. I don't know. I've lived too long. I've seen too much. You voted for who? Like, I'm done with it. I, I can't. Like, I used to be in this situation where, like, if, if I'm in a debate with someone or talking to somebody and somebody said something like, well, as a Christian, or as a Jew, or as a Muslim, I, I'd be like, well, all right, they're coming at it from a different angle, I can't really, you know. Now, when somebody's telling me, like, well, as a Christian, or as a Jew, it's as if they're saying, well, as a member of the Justin Bieber fan club. <laughs> it's the same weight, but it carries the same, let me be clear. I believe the Justin Bieber fan club has every right to exist. I believe the Justin Bieber fan club should never be discriminated against. And I believe if the Justin Bieber fan club wants to include a chapter about Justin Bieber in a science textbook, the Justin Bieber fan club can go fuck itself. That's <laughs> same position about religion. I don't, I'm not saying, to be clear, I'm not saying religious people are any worse than anybody else, all right? I'm just saying you're no longer better. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know religious people who say, ah, we don't, we don't, that's, we don't think we're better than anybody else, that's fine, we're not better. Sure. You go to heaven, everybody else goes to hell, but you're not better, no. <laughs> Just the luck of the draw, I guess. <laughs> Look, I'm still gonna be respectful, right? I'm still like, you know, if a guy walks in here with a collar, you know, if a priest walks in here with a collar, I'm still gonna call him father. You know, but it's in the same way like if a guy in a Star Trek uniform walks in here, I'll still call him Captain Kirk. But I don't think he's got a fucking spaceship parked outside. You understand what I mean? I'm playing along. I'm being nice. There's no magic. There's a slight bit of me, though, that kind of wants... I'm ostensibly Christian, so there's a slight part of me that, you know, kind of wants it to be true a little bit. Not... Eh, 
just because it's sort of bad reason, but I kind of want to go to heaven just to see all the American Christians up there realize just how Mexican heaven is. <laughs> Most of the Christian world is Latino. A lot of it. So a lot of these, this is America, speak English guys, are gonna go up there and hear the words, this is heaven, speak Spanish. <laughs> it's a just God. <laughs> That'd be weird, like just walking around America, I, no hablo, no, sorry. <laughs> We're a minority now? <laughs> What's that, sweetie? No, I can't hear you. What? I don't know. What did she say? They kept her in a cage? <laughs> I, I just invented that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that didn't happen. Don't worry. None of us are going to heaven. <laughs> you, guys, you guys are still hopeful, aren't you? <laughs> Look, I want to be clear, I'm not against... All right, first of all, I'm not religious, but I'm not even spiritual, so you should understand that. You know these people? These are people who, whose faith can't be contained by Middle Eastern narratives. These are... <laughs> these are people who, you know... <laughs> these are people whose religious beliefs are concocted through, you know, various Gwyneth Paltrow posts and things... <laughs> Things they've overheard that summer fucking a yoga instructor. You know what I mean? Like, a, more of like a free range type of religion. You know, like they shit on organized religion and then they ask you to hold crystals. <laughs> to be clear, uh, I may I may lose some support in LA for the saying this, but uh, guys, he's still president. I don't think the crystals are working. And I, I want to be clear about this. I'm not against happiness. Like, I feel like you guys think I'm like, I'm not against happiness. I just, it's not a good basis to build your life on. You know what I mean? Like, happiness is fragile. Happiness is like, there's no semblance of happiness you can have in this life that nine times out of 10 can't be destroyed with one question. And that question is, how are you? Not the first time. We're pretty good at batting it away on the first time. But the second time, how are you? Pretty good. No, man. How are you? <sighs> uh. I never got to say bye to my dad. <sighs> you could be getting a blowjob on a roller coaster. All right? Hey, how are you? Pretty good. No, man. How are you? <sighs> this isn't my wife. <laughs> I guess you gotta find it in the little things. I saw I saw a bird pooping on another bird today. That was fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> and the bird got pooped on with surprise. I was like, what the? F you know, like. <laughs> pissed off, you know? It wasn't like stoic, like, yeah, I had this coming. No, it was... <laughs> no, it's like, it's... It's not easy doing this. Not like, uh, not the talking in front of people and making them laugh, you know, that's challenging, but it's fun. I mean, uh, the other part, like after. Living. <laughs> like, I, I gotta walk around with these thoughts in my head. Like, for the rest of my life, like I'll, I was in the park, I had an hour to kill, I was in Central Park, it was a nice day. And I was like, I'm just gonna sit on a bench, chill out, you know, just, just enjoy yourself, come on man, calm down, just enjoy yourself, just relax, whatever, another six years, who cares, like just <laughs> chill out, all right? Start enjoying myself, it's beautiful, it's nature. And then three, this is true, three birds landed on the bench next to me, I was like, see man, that's awesome, it's beautiful, just relax. And then at one point, like, two of the birds started having sex with each other. And I was like, that's nature, man. That's just beautiful. <laughs> and I looked, and I realized the third bird is looking at the other two birds having sex. And my mind went, well, that must be the husband. So, like... <laughs> <laughs> I 
when you do also when you do comedy, friends of yours ask you weird questions. Like, <laughs> I have a friend, the male model, successful male model. You've seen his billboards. This dude's Italian. He comes to New York like three months a year. His name is Leo. Leo asked me a couple of months ago, I was like, Sasha, you do comedy? I said, yeah. He says, what's a good pickup line? <laughs> I'm like, what? You see, I see in all these American movies, all the guys have pickup lines. I don't have a pickup line. What's a good pickup line? I told him, dude, you're a wealthy male model. Those movies aren't about you. <laughs> if I were you, I'd just walk up to a woman at a bar, introduce myself, and like say the worst thing I can think of. Hi, I'm Leo, I hate Jews. And then watch her work around it, you know? Like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, I don't like my parents either. He, he did a, he came to a show and then after the show, my, my, my comedy friends were like, ah, it's cool, you get to hang out with him? I'm like, yeah, yeah, he's a cool guy. No, no, but like, you know, you guys go out and you know, some girl goes up to him and you know, he doesn't like her, you're right there. And I'm like, yeah, that's not how that works. That's, I'm not exactly, I don't know if you noticed, I'm not exactly the next door down from that house. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> that's, it's a bit of a precipitous <laughs> drop for a girl, you know? Like, here, here, I'm gonna take you to a journey of what has to happen for a girl to go get a no from Leo to get to me. She gets a no from Leo. She goes home, relaxes, she wakes up, a little hungover, but whatever, you know, it's Sunday, she's gonna go into the covers, spend the whole day on Netflix. Feels a little bit guilty about that, but she needs that, you know? We all need that. Monday, though, Work week starts, it's a fucking disaster. Everybody's on her, her boss is chewing her ear off, it's terrible. We get work on Wednesday, her mother calls her, makes her feel kind of uh, inside. She's bad about that. Thursday, something horrible happened, like her friend gets engaged. And then on <laughs> Friday, she's done with work, she goes out, she has a couple of drinks, that's where she meets me. <laughs> that's my area of operation right there. That's, that's the sweet spot for me. When a woman goes home with Leo, she knows she's made it in life. When a woman goes home with me, she knows she needs to make changes in life. <laughs> a one night stand with me is usually followed by a juice cleanse and a yoga retreat. <laughs> I inspire that way. I don't know, maybe I should be bi. You know why, this is why. Like, I lived with my girlfriend the past five years, and uh, you know, sometimes I think, like, uh, before I go home, it'd be cool to just go to the bathroom, get a hand job from some 20-year-old dude, you know? <laughs> just, to, just to go home with loose shoulders, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> how was your day, honey? Oh, it was pretty good, yeah. It's like, just, <laughs> not that you can't get, like, a hand job from a 20-year-old girl, but, like, you know, it's more texting, and, you know, it just <laughs> takes forever. <laughs> I don't know, is anybody here by? I mean, I mean men, not women. I, every time I do this, just some two girls, woo, not you, nobody cares. Like, no, <laughs> you being bi is like a nice, fun thing that happened. You know, like that's, if one of you girls goes home with, uh, with a girl for the first time tonight, it's gonna be like a nice, fun thing. You know, it's gonna be something you talk to your friends about at brunch on Sunday. Like, so Brenda, what's it like being with another woman? It's different. <laughs> If he goes home with a dude for the first time tonight, that's not gonna be his answer. <laughs> He's not gonna be, bro, you wanna go to the game? No, nah, man, I gotta be alone for a while. <laughs> it's like a life event. <laughs> not that easy for us. I like how people think it's a choice. People think, oh, you can choose what, like you can choose what gender you're attracted to. Most of you can't choose what person you're attracted to. Like, yeah, I made this choice. Wh wh where's the logic in this? Yeah, I made this choice. At 13 years old, I was like sitting there one day, you know, and I was like, ah. <sighs> you know what, fuck going to Mykonos and having abs. Um, I wanna be confused and frustrated my whole life. I wanna 
spend 20 minutes a week deciphering emojis. <laughs> I made that choice, yeah. <laughs> also, bi, bisexual in men is sort of an untrusted category. Here's what I mean. I have a friend who's bisexual. And he'll get this a lot. He'll be like, you're bisexual? Yeah. How many men were you with this year? 10. All right. How many women were you with this year? One. <laughs> and they don't trust it because the numbers don't add up. But th you're not taking into consideration how difficult it is to have sex with one woman versus 10 men. <laughs> Somebody asked him that question last year and I heard he was with one woman. I was like, oh my God, she was, she was something special, right? That was, you had a real connection with her. Otherwise, why would you fucking even put in the time? Like. <laughs> I don't know, sometimes I think like, yeah, getting a hand job from a 20 year old dude would, you know, put me at ease if I could do it. But I can't, it doesn't do it for me. But you see what I did there? I equated 20 year old men with 20 year old women, because like, I'm thinking 20 year old girl, 20 year old. It's a very straight male mind thing to equate. Because 20 year old women are universally valuable, right? You take her, you take her to Bangkok, Beijing, Budapest, whatever. Oh, welcome, miss, would you like a drink? You know, like 20 year old men are universally worthless. <laughs> they can't do anything. They can't, like, they, they, they don't know how to work. <laughs> they stay out too late. They drink too much. They sleep in too late. They can't make any money. They don't know how to fuck. <laughs> they keep getting into fights and killing each other in car accidents. Their emotional range goes from jerking off to angry they're not jerking off. <laughs> This is a demographic, 20 year old men is a demographic that countries all around the world without even talking to each other have universally decided this is the demographic we're gonna send off to dusty deserts to kill each other, to bring down the price of gas by three fucking cents. That's their worth in this world, all right? And when, <laughs> and when one of them dies, it's a tragedy, but you always hear it's always, it's always a tragedy for what they could have become. Nobody's crying over what they are right now. <laughs> And too, too dark. That's, that's how we treat our soldiers. That's, they get to board flights early, though. That's <laughs> before business class. Not before first. Let's not forget what they're fighting for. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of tension in this country, right? Right now, we're in like this mm, past two years. And I think it's. Um, I think part of it is they undersold hate to us. Like, you guys grew up, you know, with me, and you watched the same cartoons in Sesame Street. You know what they taught you, right? Don't hate anybody. Don't hate anybody. Why would you hate anybody? All you end up doing is destroying yourself and wasting energy. All you do is destroy yourself. True. Eventually. <laughs> but in the meantime, hate is fun. <laughs> we're, we're feeling that now. Have you ever tried hate? Have you ever tried hate? It'll give you energy, man. Let's try hate for a while. Let's, let's do any. Hate is a versatile solution for modern living. Hate will get you anywhere. Let's try it, all right? But not like small personal hate. I mean like broad hate, you know? Like not the way you hate your girlfriend, but like entire... <laughs> like let's try it, right? Any problem you have. You can't get a job, Mexicans. Can't join the team, black people. Can't get a mortgage, Jews. It works for everything. You never have to self-analyze anymore. You never have to reflect. Hate will get you up in the morning. It'll get you to the gym. You ever try fucking anybody you hate? Performance enhancer. <laughs> yeah, of course, eventually we'll all kill each other and be, you know, destroy ourselves. But in the meantime, we'll be thinner. <laughs> so that's how they... Everybody's like, how do they stay so thin in France? They all fucking hate each other. That's how... <laughs> I'm not, uh, I have no idea where, where it all came from. All this like anti-multiculturalism and shit. Most of you are from New York. You like it, right? It's cool walking around strange neighborhoods. Wow, you make this from chickpeas? Cool. You know, like it's... 
It's like a fun thing. Like multiculturalism is awesome. It means better food, better sex, better music. I don't know how anybody could be against it. I mean, to, to, to clarify this, this whole thing, right? I'm, this is like, I don't know, some Eastern European sheep herding dynasty. Like this is, that's where I'm coming from. <laughs> I'm Eastern European by origin, which is white, but barely. And it's white with no money. That's the, <laughs> my last name is Serbal, which in Slovenian means illiterate. It doesn't mean anything in any language, so who knows. But if you see it written out, it's spelled S-R-B-U-L-J, which when you see written out, looks like something your computer suggests is a password. <laughs> you can try it. I, you, go ahead and use it, all right? They just go in, you type it in, goes full green. You, know? <laughs> you don't need a number, a symbol? No, man, that's random as fuck. That is... No encryption is gonna crack that shit. I'm Eastern, I'm Eastern uh, European. So here's a fun thing to do if you're Eastern European. Do you, do you guys know that there's this website called Anastasia.com, which uh, builds itself as a website if you want to find a European girlfriend. But none of those girls are from Paris. <laughs> None of them went to the London School of Economics, all right? It's all Belarus and Moldova and associated kleptocracies, all right? It's when a girl from Ukraine wants to escape her irradiated village and hook up with some dipshit from Ohio, this is the website she goes to. And I go on there not because I want to find an Eastern European girlfriend. I go on there because I, you know, I think maybe I can find a relative. <laughs> You know, maybe I can find uh, somebody with this last name, like Antonia or something. Second reason I go on there, and I, I, I think we could do this together. I think if you look hard enough, you'll find an ancient Melania Trump profile. <laughs> and I think that's kind. Of, I think that's how they should have ran against him. I think that's how they should. They should have gone and found the guy she fucked before him. <laughs> Just go to that Slovenian tire care center. <laughs> Pick that dude up, and that should be the debate. It should be Trump at one podium, and a Bosnian dude in a tracksuit with a gold chain around his neck at the next podium. <laughs> <laughs> Your wife can't come unless she think of me. <laughs> you know? End of election. <laughs> Done. Yeah, we'd be stuck with President Bogdan for four years, but like, whatever, you know, like, better than this moron. <laughs> I was also surprised at the misogyny. I'm not, I'm not, you know. Like, I, I didn't know there was that present in this country. I, I don't hate women, so. All right, let me, let me clarify. <laughs> I don't hate women any more than it is required to have sex with them. Do you, all right, just to, you're a sophisticated crowd. You're gonna get this, all right? You know when you're riding a guy and you grab onto his chest hairs and you're, uh, that's not all love, all right? There's a little bit of hate there. So in the same way, I hate women a little, but I still want you to get health care and get paid. I'm not a fucking lunatic. <laughs> we need to heal. This country needs healing. All right? It's good to have each other. It's a dangerous world out there. It's all kinds of shit. MS-13, ISIS, scary. Good to have somebody. Anybody here married? Yeah. You? Yeah. All right. You love your husband, right? It's good to have him, right? It's scary. There's all kinds of shit out there. I want you to, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to ask you a question. All right? You're going to close your eyes. You're going to think of your husband, about the man you love. You close your eyes. All right? You're thinking about your husband, the man you love, the man who's there for you. As you think about him, I want you to answer this question. Statistically, who's most likely to kill you? <laughs> ISIS isn't even close. It's like him. Then it's like 
five rows of him, but they can't prove it. <laughs> then it's the guy you're really fucking... I mean, ISIS isn't even... ISIS is all the way... The cops would be shocked if MS-13 or ISIS killed you. They'd be... They, first, they'd apologize to your husband. All right? That's, <laughs> every time somebody's like, I'm afraid of MS-13. Really? Is your husband joining MS-13? Because that's who's going to fucking kill you. <laughs> Let's, let's travel a bit. The artificial intelligence, when it does become conscious, if you were that, if you were the artificial intelligence, you became conscious, would the first thing you do be to inform your human creators, hey, I'm here, I'm aware, I'm a threat, unplug me, or would you maybe stand by? Maybe try to divide us, soften us up. Maybe pit us against each other. Maybe create a media landscape where we can't agree on, the, on reality. Maybe help elect a divisive moron who just keeps throwing gasoline on every fire. Maybe it already happened. Maybe we're not aware. This isn't really a joke. I just want you to obsess about shit for the rest of the day. I just want you to think about this for the next 20 years. <laughs> At least the economy's good, right? If you believe that bullshit. I don't. But neither should you. If you guys want to lose all faith you have in our corporate overlords, I suggest you go home and you turn on Fox Business Channel. Not for what they say. They all say the same shit. Like Bloomberg, CNBC, it's all the same shit. It's how they look. Go turn it on, mute it. I'll, I'll explain. The ladies on Fox Business Channel look like... Uh... All right, you know, you know when you go to a strip club and the stripper tells you, I'm just doing this to save up for business school? <laughs> when you turn on Fox Business Channel, you think, maybe she actually went to business school. <laughs> And now she's doing this. I, it's sort of like the wardrobe they wear. It's sort of like the thing. Like, imagine what a hooker would wear on a real date, because this guy's different. Like, that's... It's the Hopeful Hooker Collection by Calvin Klein. And the men on Fox Business Channel look like patrons of a strip club that somebody hastily took the men's warehouse over the weekend. It's a... Honestly, it's a lot of shows with women sitting on bar stools, cross-legged in, sh in short skirts. You know, journalism. And um, <laughs> if you ever want to hear about the Dow Jones Industrial Average from somebody with glitter on their tits, this is the channel you go to. <laughs> They're always railing against regulations on those channels. I don't know, I like regulations. I know I'm not supposed to, long hair, don't care, right? But I kinda, here's a regulation that's fun. Right now, there's a regulation that says that you cannot sell your child's internal organs. And I know what you're thinking. Who would, who would do that? Well, every law exists for a reason. <laughs> let's, let's imagine, let's say tomorrow the government comes down to you. You know what, guys, forget that. From now on, an eight-year-old's kidneys are worth $300,000 on the open market. Pretty soon, there'd be a whole lot of kids walking around with one kidney. <laughs> we, the price would go from $300,000 to $20,000 pretty quickly. We'd flood the market with tiny little kidneys. <laughs> you'd, you'd, it'd be normal. You'd, be, you'd meet people at parties within like a week. or like, yeah, we like, <sighs> fucking missed out on the whole kidney thing because Justin had the flu, you know? Like... <laughs> Couldn't do it. <laughs> no, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be normalized. It'd be like, you know, like, I, look, I'm not saying you people would do it immediately. <laughs> All right? I'm just saying if it was out there, month after month, just sitting there, looking at your mortgage, you look at your kid. <laughs> look at your mortgage, you look at your kid. You look at your mortgage, you look at your stupid fucking kid. Like, it, it builds on you. 
Like they'd have to make new regulations pretty soon. They'd have to be like, guys, guys, one kid per kid. We know we don't have enough dialysis machines to go around. This is hurting you, right? Is this too dark? The whole kidney thing? Is this like you feel bad that I mentioned it 30 seconds ago and you're already thinking about new kitchens? Is that annoying you? <laughs> nah, come on, it's not that bad. It'd be normal pretty quickly. You know, you'd be sitting there watching Nickelodeon with your kid in the recovery room. And, <laughs> and it'd be fine, you'd feel okay about it. I mean, they'd announce kids on like the Kids' Choice Awards. Like, here comes Evan. Evan's eight years old. He likes pizza, Minecraft, and he's rocking one kidney. Like, it would be fine. <laughs> you guys are pretty sunny disposition people, right? <laughs> I don't, I don't, like, there's a lot of millennials here. I don't shit on millennials, so you'll be safe to know that, all right? I like millennials. Millennials like regulations. They're good people. Also, I kind of feel bad for them because, you know, they're going to be the first generation that's going to eventually get eaten by robots. <laughs> and, and they know that, you know. Look at them, that's why they're so anxious all the time. Can't focus. Like, it's, it's, it's coming in the near future. Like, let's say, let's say I own a company in the near future and I can hire robots or people. Robots or people. Sell me on people. <laughs> what are people? You gotta pay them, they want vacation. They want dental, their kids want braces, they want dental, they put little Tupper, you know, post-it notes on Tupperware, like, don't eat, this is mine. That's what people are. <laughs> people sue you if you're the boss and you masturbate on top of them. That, robots don't do that. <laughs> robots have never sued somebody for masturbating on top of them. And I know, I look, and I know what you're gonna say. You're gonna say, Sasha, most CEOs do not derive pleasure from masturbating on top of robots, and you're right. It's far more pleasurable to Masturbate on top of your employee contemporaries, but so you you know you're right. You're, you're gonna have some jobs in the future, but um, <laughs> so, that's what you're gonna be doing for money. Tips probably, most likely tips. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Vote next time. I uh, <laughs> I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna move to Brooklyn to be closer to the millennials. I like them. We'll move to Bushwick. Is anybody here from Bushwick? And does anybody here, ah, oh, one guy. All right, does anybody here know Skip's Cafe in Bushwick? All right, yes, all right, so let me, let me preface this by saying first, because you seem the kind of audience that wants to hear this. Whatever part of the gender spectrum you're on, and whatever part of the gender spectrum you're going to, I fully support you. But Skip's Cafe in Bushwick, as far as gender goes, looks like the cantina from Star Wars. There's just, everybody's going from one direction to another. It's a beautiful thing, man. Like, I, I've been in there, I've, I've heard this sentence. Wow, I wish I had tits like him. And it makes sense. <laughs> It totally makes sense, it's a great thing. And by the way, if you have a conservative relative from out of town, this is the place you take them. It's an education. Skip's Cafe welcomes all of God's children. It's a beautiful thing. And like, I have a friend who, <laughs> I have a friend who's, who asked me after hearing this, hey dude, what's the name of that transgender bar you mentioned in your joke? It's not a transgender bar. Right, there's no such thing as a trans, it's not a gay bar. I've been to gay, I know gay bars. I know a lot of gay bars for a straight guy, all right? Like, I like electronic music. I live in New York. It's gonna happen, right? I mean, it's, but it's not like that. It's not like a gay bar. There's no such thing as a transgender bar. It's sort of like, all right, like, let's say you go to a cafe, right? And you walk in and you realize that out of the corner of your eye, there's a little person there. Whatever, you don't, you know, whatever. You just drink, gotta drink your coffee. Five minutes later, another little person walks in, but they're not connected or anything. They're just, you know, at that point, you go, oh, what are the odds? You know, like you start, you don't think about it much. 
You go away, you come back a week later, and there's like a third little person there. At that point, you're like, wow, there must be something in Yelp about this, right? Like, this is, But it's not a little person bar. Like, the tables are all the right size, the avocado toast isn't on a Triscuit. You know, like, it's not a little person bar. They didn't have those places. I grew up sort of on Long Island, which, uh, I don't know if you know Long Island, but Long Island should be paradise on earth. It's one hour from the city, 20 minutes from beaches in either direction. Should be great, it should be paradise on earth. But it isn't. <laughs> and it's because of the people. Uh, <laughs> not all the people, most of them are cool, but there's like this, you know what it is about Long Island? There's like this strong undercurrent of like, just like middle-aged men squinting, like, whose car is that? What? <laughs> whose car is that? You know that guy? Just suspicious of everything for no reason. Who's that guy? Who's she dating now? What's he, like Puerto Rican? No? Like half black? No? I don't know, he's something. Some, like, you know, like, we, in Brooklyn, you're never more than four blocks away from like an organic food co-op slash center for misgendered children. And then in Long Island, he's like, I don't know, he's something. <laughs> What's he, like Armenian? <laughs> they, they all know Armenian now because of the Kardashians. They don't know what the fuck an Armenian is. But they know of the name. It's kind of like gluten. You know, like, they know of gluten, they don't know what it is, but they know of it. <laughs> they all get suspicious. I don't know what it is about Long Island. It's just people, and by the way, if you're from Jersey and you're hearing this, fuck you too, you're the same. I'm just, <laughs> I don't know what it is, they get suspicious. I have no idea over what. I know people who lived in the city for years and they go to Long Island within two years. Like I have this friend, she moved to Long Island, she came back, we met for drinks, she's like, did you hear there's a serial killer on Long Island? It was on the Channel 12 News, there's a serial killer. You didn't hear about this? They, they found the bodies of five prostitutes out by the pines. He's been dumping their, him there over the past two years. I don't know what to do. Don't be a hooker. I mean, like, <laughs> case solved. Like, I, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know what to, uh, if you tighten up during this set, I just want you to know, uh, these are just opinions, people. These are just, and remember, whatever opinions you hold, I'm gonna end pretty soon. So just remember this, whatever opinions you hold, no matter how you feel about them, they're really just your interests, masked with like ideals and beliefs. You take like something like abortion, right? Some people are pro-life, some people are pro-choice. A lot of people that used to be pro-choice, when they get older, they turn pro-life. And they tell you things like, you know, you get older, your values change, you realize what's important in life, and you just evolve on that issue. True. Also, you get older, you stop fucking, you can't really get pregnant, that doesn't really affect you anymore, so you take the high road. There's also that. <laughs> Very few people walking out of threesomes talking about the sanctity of life. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and my friends are all older and they have kids and I'm hearing this shit. <laughs> I'm hearing like things like, we used to be very liberal on abortion. But ever since we had Tyler, we've evolved on that issue. Uh, I swear to God, one day I'm just gonna be like, yeah, I used to be very uh, conservative on the issue of abortion, even, even in cases of rape and incest. <sighs> then I met your Tyler. <sighs> I've evolved on that issue. Thank you very much for coming out. One more time for Sasha Serval, everybody. One more time for Sasha Serval.